Einstein also uses the Lorentz transformations to show how Maxwell's equations change from one reference frame to another reference frame. And remember that in this article we are talking about inertial frames. In particular, the first thing he does when it comes to considering the electromagnetic field, he writes down Maxwell's equations in empty space. In particular, he writes the electric field equal to these three components, capital X, capital Y, and capital Z. This is his notation. Whereas for the magnetic field, or in particular, the speed of light times the magnetic field, and these are vectors, he writes capital L, capital M, and capital N. So if you want X is EX, Y is EY, Z is EZ, and uh, here L is C times BX, M is C times BY, and N is C times BZ. Then, in vacuum, he writes these equations, then I will try to explain more. 1 over C, D capital X DT equal to D capital N DY minus dm dz then we have 1 over c d capital y dt equal to dl dz minus dn dx then we have 1 over c d capital z dt equal to dm dx minus dl dy then we have 1 over c dl dt equal to dy dz minus dz dy remember that these letters here are the components of the electric field so they are written in capital letters whereas z and y here that i have just circled these are the spatial components the special variables as special variables we have x y z lowercase t remember that we have four dimensions then we also have one over c dm dt equal to d capital z dx minus d capital x dz one over c d capital n dt equal to d capital x dy minus d capital y dx now it is quite easy to see that this first equation here is none other than or maybe we can also rewrite it in this fashion so that it becomes more familiar is 1 over c dex dt equal to curl of CB and this is the X component of that so if we consider these three equations together we can see that this is equal to 1 over C derivative of the electric field with respect to time equal to the curl of CB like this whereas this first equation here can be also written in this fashion 1 over c derivative of cbx dt equal to minus the curl of the electric field and in particular we take the x component of this so when we consider these three together we get this equation 1 over c derivative of cb dt equal to minus the curl of the electric field now this equation here and also this equation here are none other than Maxwell's equations written in vacuum and also remember that in vacuum we have the divergence of the electric field equal to zero because we are in vacuum and also the divergence of B, 
which is equal to zero also if we are not in vacuum, but this is still a true equation. Now, what Einstein does is to rewrite these expressions, these six equations, in another frame. So remember that in special relativity, also if you check the previous lectures, we can consider a frame of reference xi era zira tau, which is moving with velocity v with respect to the previous frame x, y, z, t. And the velocity v goes along the xi axis or x axis because these axes are parallel to each other. And let me remind you the transformations. We have xi equal to beta, which is none other than the Lorentz factor. Then we have x minus vt. We have tau equal to beta t minus v over c squared x. Then we have era equal to y. And then we have zira equal to z, like this. Now, Einstein writes six equations because he transforms all these equations according to the new reference frame by using the fact that x will become a function of xi, era, zira, tau, and also the other variables n, m, l, y, z, just like this. We are going to derive one of these equations, only one, so I will show you the steps, and then of course the same logic and the same mathematics can be applied to derive the other equations. We will consider this one, and we are going to transform it into the new reference frame. So we have, if I do it here, the starting equation is 1 over c, d capital X, dt equal to dn dy minus dm dz. And if I transform it to the new reference frame, I have to consider x, n, and m as functions of tau, xi, era, zero. And I can rewrite using the chain rule the equation like this, 1 over c, dx, d capital X, d tau, d tau, dt, plus d capital X, d xi, d xi, dt, plus d capital X, d era, d era, dt, plus d capital X, d zero, d zero, dt. Now you can easily check that this term will give rise to zero because the era over dt is zero and also this one is zero. And this should be equal to something similar for this term. We have dn d tau d tau dy, which is zero, plus dn d xi d xi dy, which is zero, plus dn d era d era dy and the era dy is equal to one so we will be left with uh, this term then we have plus dn d zero d zero dy which is zero and finally we have something similar for this so we have minus i am not going to rewrite all the terms because only one of those will be non-zero and it will be dm d zero times d zero dz which is also equal to 1. This is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1. Now, if you take those derivatives, you have I mean, something very simple. 1 over c, beta, d capital X, d tau, minus v, d capital X, d xi, equal to dn, d era, minus dm, d zero. Now, we have changed our equation. Starting from one reference frame, we have gone to a different frame. So this is a valid equation, but we want to rewrite it in such a way that the equation can be written in this form, like this, one over c d x prime d tau equal to d n prime d era minus d m prime d zero, like this. 
because we are in a frame of reference which is inertial and in an inertial frame of reference the equations should have the same form this one should be of the same form as the starting equation which is this one but if you compare this equation here with this one you can notice that they don't have the same form and we will make use of this fact of the fact that the divergence of the electric field is equal to zero this means that the derivative of capital X with respect to lowercase x plus derivative of y with respect to lowercase y plus derivative of capital Z with respect to Z this is equal to zero in vacuum so we have to transform this equation in the new frame it's an easy job we can easily do that by using the chain rule and we obtain something like this dx d capital x dx i times beta minus d capital x d tau times beta v over c squared plus dy over d era plus d capital z d zeta equal to zero so this is also capital y sometimes i'm missing the word capital but you should get the idea here in the numerator we have capital letters x y z which denote the electric field whereas in the denominator here here we have lowercase letters and in particular uh, where, where you see here for example x y and z as i said we have just uh, the variables used for position anyway now from this equation we can find this term dx over dx i which also appears here in this equation above so what i'm going to do is i'm going to substitute for this term and i'm using the fact that we can rewrite dx over dx i by using this equation here so when you do that you get 1 over c times beta times 1 minus b squared over c squared d capital x d tau and if you check this term here is equal to 1 over beta because if you remember beta which is the Lorentz factor is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus b squared over c squared and this is equal to here minus b over c d capital y d era minus b over c d capital z d zeta plus here we have d n d era minus d m d zeta and now you can simply manipulate this expression and you can rewrite it as 1 over c d capital x d tau and i have multiplied by beta both sides of this equation and then i can rearrange it like this d over d era of beta times n minus b over c capital y minus d over d zeta and here we have beta m plus b over c capital z like this now einstein argues that if you compare this equation here with this equation there are some technicalities but we will not get into the technicalities but he argues at the end that this term here should be equal to n prime this term here should be equal to m prime and this term here should be equal to x prime so for example let's write the second one here we have n prime equal to beta n minus b over c y and if the speed of light is much larger than the velocity v for instance it means that beta is approximately equal to 1 and this factor is approximately 0 because c 
is much larger than v. And in that case, n prime will be approximately equal to n if v is much smaller than c. And something similar for this equation here. And this same reasoning can be applied also to derive the other equations, as I said. For example, another equation that you can find with the same reasoning is the following. y prime is equal to beta times y minus v over c n. And in this case, you should be a little bit more careful when it comes to considering small velocities, because if the velocity is small, you might say, well, y prime will be almost equal to y, right? Because beta will be close to 1, and this term will go to 0. But you should also remind yourself that this vector, Cb, is Lmn, right? So we have the speed of light here as well for the magnetic field. And therefore, when we consider this expression, let me go below, here you would have Bz times c and this factor of c we get rid of this factor of c so even for small velocities this is not really the equation y prime equal to y but for small velocity we can say that y prime is approximately equal to y minus v times bz so the only thing that we can say is that beta is approximately equal to 1 